Hello, namaste. My name is Prasad Agarwal. By training, I'm a physicist. I used to do research in physics, but now I teach in a private school in New York. I teach physics, chemistry, a uh, little bit computer science, um, and uh, engineering. I have always been interested in spirituality, and uh, in my opinion, spirituality and science are not mutually exclusive. Why do people turn to spirituality? For happiness. Here, I want to distinguish between happiness and pleasure. I don't mean pleasure or fleeting moments of joy. Happiness, uh, to me, is more lasting and more meaningful. Now, everyone wants to be happy. Now, who is the happiest man in the world, or is there someone like that? If you Google the happiest man in the world, uh, if you type in in the Google um, the search engine, you'll come across his name. I, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Matthew Rickard. He's a French-born Tibetan monk who's been practicing for years and years mindfulness meditation in the Buddhist uh, tradition. Now, why is he the happiest man in the world? There's been a scientific study of his brain, of the activities in his brain, uh, an ongoing study, I would say, uh, primarily by a neuroscientist at the University of Wisconsin. His name is Richard Davidson. What Dr. Davidson did was hook up something like 256 electrodes onto Matthew Rickard's brain, and he studied the activities. And what he found was, in his left prefrontal cortex, there was an incredible amount of activity, uh, as opposed to in his right uh, prefrontal cortex. Now, uh, if you're unfamiliar with what each uh, side does, if you have increased activity in the left cortex, that means you, you're relaxed, uh, you're less prone to depression, uh, and you're compassionate, you, you're generally happier than if, um, if you have an increased activity in the right prefrontal cortex. Everyone has you know, happy people have, you know, as I said before, increased activity in the left prefrontal cortex. But what Ms. Dr. Davidson observed was, in the case of Matthew Rickard's brain, that activity was completely off the chart. Now, how did he do it? In his own words, he trained his mind in thinking positive thoughts and, um, and developing feelings of compassion benevolence and kindness. This is a skill. So all these things, concentration or benevolence or uh, thinking happy thoughts, all these are skills. Now, uh, as Bhagavad Gita says, you can train yourself to do these things. And there is a clear prescribed path in which you can do that. And uh, Matthew Rickard, uh, for example, is just one person who has done this over the years consistently. Um, in this day and age, everyone is busy and a lot of people have this excuse, I don't have the time. But think about the amount of time that you spend on the outside world, thinking about factors that you have no control over, that gives you uh, an incredible amount of stress every single day. But maybe st to start off, you can spend 15 minutes a day training your mind. Um, now, nowadays, corporate America and lots of other people um, have a renewed interest in mindfulness, mindfulness meditation. There, there, there are training programs. But um, we have an incredible resource right at hand for Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita tells you uh, exactly who should meditate, what your mental state should be when you meditate, and what you can expect after going through um, extensive training in meditation. So this is what we want to focus on uh, in this project called Project Gita. Thank you very much.